All right, we're going to continue with our time, our time reasoning on time in this Twilight Zone time. I was just making a comment about some of these shows, like you remember the Jerry Springer show and 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 uh, Maury Povich, Povich, Povich show, and now they got all these new kind of shows, like they got this, I call it the PBS for the ghetto, you know, this English guy. They got a lot of these English people coming over here making money. You know, England having some problems with the economy, so they come bring these shows over here, like the Jeremy Kyle show and these other kind of shows, regurgitating, throwing up, vomiting these issues over and over. And people wonder, like, wow, like a lot of people are going through these kind of issues, and how come things are not changing? That's also part of what's going on with this time thing that we're on to about time. Now, what we had left off from previously, this is some of the notes um, from the Ethiopic, the Ethiopic perspective to time. What do we mean by that? Well, what we know of time or what we believe is true of time is shaped by the, the Gentiles or this Gentile Western approach to science, approach to time, approach to theories about a lot of things. And unfortunately, many of these theories are being proven to be false or untrue, like the whole earth is flat theory. They say people believe the earth was flat, but the truth really is the Europeans believe the earth was flat because as they're going and discovering and rediscovering and uncovering ancient archives from ancient cultures, it is now known that many ancient cultures on some scientific levels and understandings and overstandings of the universe were actually more advanced at least up to or more advanced, really more advanced, but they say were up to our present age. Many of the ancient, and we know that many of the ancient cultures, such as we look at the pyramids, so forth and so on, this is why they have to say, well, perhaps these were aliens or people from outer space or beings from outer space, so forth and so on. But what we're focusing on right now is time, how we're living in a twilight zone time. And since time is not lineal, although we put this line up here on our chart, we began roughly around 1890 because based on some of the um, documentation that we have pointed to here, and we touched on this book, you know, opening up this whole, I would say, a next level of our studies, this book right here on shining the light, see some of that so-called New Age, Illuminist, some might say Satanist, whatever, kind of symbology. But this particular book right here, which is book one, and we had this in our archives. You can tell it's kind of well-worn, beat up, so forth and so on. And, you know, this is stuff that we've read before. We, we, we peruse some areas we were more interested. But we recall this particular book was interesting, but was not that interesting to us at that time. You know, you might have some books that you either bought or you got and you checked out. It was all right, but you wasn't into it then. And then you, as time goes on, you, you'll see the book or you'll look through some stuff, find the book, and you'll skim through it again. And then you find that it's more interesting. In other words, you've grown in a level of consciousness that you're now able to either digest or appropriate from the book something that is relevant for you in the present time. Just think about it for a moment. The book was already written. This information was already out there. But then we have to come to a, a maturity, you understand, or a growth. So we have to evolve. You know, they talk about evolution and Darwinism. Now, evolution as a word is not bad. Evolution basically means that things evolve and things do evolve. But what was bad about the Darwinian evolution is that coupled with it was many racist tendencies based on it being a Eurocentric coming from a European mind and also based on the political, social, and Gentile agenda in that particular time. But there is such a thing as evolution, and we know that we can evolve or devolve. And then there's such a thing called revolution, which is a re-evolving. 
So when we talk about a revolution, and people say, well, we're looking for a revolution, at the, at the base of the idea of a revolution is the principle of evolving. And what has perverted the idea, once again, is this world and the Gentile world system. Because if we say the word evolve or evolution, the first thing people are going to think about is Darwinian, false and racist Darwin, Darwinian or Darwinian theories of evolution which were coupled with racist notions, you understand, and racist European Neanderthal perceptions of the higher race that had fallen or had consciously devolved. In other words, black people at this time had devolved. So the Europeans felt that actually they were more primitive in that sense of being more animalistic and they, in their perception, white folks, were more advanced somehow, so forth and so on. Now, of course, many of these theories have been debunked. And it's very interesting if we look at the so-called timeline of these theories being debunked. And we're not talking about a long period of time. If we think about 400 years, 400 years, 500 years is not really a long period of time, especially if you have experienced the past 20 or 30 or 40 years. Think about that. Think about the past 20 or 30 or 40 years. Think about all the things that happened in the 60s, for example, in the 70s the 80s, the 90s, where we're at right now. Think about all the things that have happened since so-called 2001, right? And it seems as though it's a short period of time, but when you start to think about what you recall and what you remember, it might seem as though a lot of stuff happened in this, quote, period of time. But what is time really? Time is more about consciousness, and perception than anything else. And we've been stuck in a time loop, in a twilight zone loop. And um, like we said, we pointed to this book first, this particular book here that in the first part of this series that we're doing right here on time, just to touch on some very interesting things concerning time. Now, this book we had pointed to in a previous uh, video, and we bring this one forward again, this one about prophecies and predictions, this particular book right here, Prophecies and Predictions, Everyone's Guide to the Coming Changes. Remember um, President Obama, he, they say, won because of this idea of change. But a lot of folks nowadays don't like the change that's going on, in other words, or they don't like the fact that they had dollars before and now they have just some change. But anyway, it goes beyond Obama. I mean, just Obama happened to capitalize on that particular idea in that particular time. Now, this particular book, we just turn to this, open this up. And you know when you're onto something is because you have an idea and it might be a little bit foggy or fuzzy. And then you go and seek it out and search it out. And as you begin to search it out, you start to come across a lot of other bits and pieces. So we open this book almost to this very page and scanning it and skimming it, waiting to record the next part of this. We were skimming through it, and we got to Chapter 7. Chapter 7 is entitled Prophecy and Pragmatism. And not to go through this whole chapter here, but the page that we touched on was this page about free will and karma free will and karma. So our eye had glanced over it, and we had glanced on this, this, this um, sentence here on page 107. And it says, that is to say, this is the part that we looked at, and we'll explain the connection. That is to say, if circumstances were to unfold as a logical chain of events, in other words, in a linear fashion, right, 1925 would see the fruition of the prediction. And then we say, wait, this is exactly what we've been talking about, this whole something is weird about time. Because when you think about it, it's about time that 
we should be in a new system of things. So many things have been exposed. So many things are known. Think about all that's known about the New World Order, the secret societies, what's going on in the economy. So you would think that we should be in a new system. We should, we should have already gone through these changes, but something seems to be looping. Something seems to be the consciousness that keeps looping, and we spoke about how the media, on one hand, contributes to this and how the suppression or the uh, deflection of certain significant history that is not part of the Gentile world system is not a part of the Gentile world powers. In other words, that which is not um, pro-white supremacy, that's not according to the Gentile mind in this world system that has exposed the errors, the flaws, and even the satanic put possession in this Gentile world system have been suppressed. It's out there. You can find the information here and there but it's been suppressed from the mainstream. It's, it's not spoken about. It's not talked about. In other words, it's kept out of the consciousness. So even though evidence is coming out to expose the lies, because they've been able to redirect the consciousness, they've been able to keep a certain time loop that when you look at when these things were discovered or uncovered, you say, that was a long time ago. How come nothing changed? because they deflected the consciousness. So we're living in a kind of a psychic twilight zone. What we're picking up on is this particular timeline right here. Like we said, we're looking at it right here in a lineal fashion, but time in truth does not go in a lineal fashion. Time is a consciousness thing. It's just like right now you could observe yourself just sitting down for a moment not maybe listening to anything, maybe just sitting down, maybe reading a book. Maybe you, sit, you lie down and you just take a, take a little rest. And have you ever noticed that time doesn't move the way you think it does? You notice that when you think that a long time has passed, sometimes you find it's just a short time. But it felt much, much, like much more time has passed. And you will look at your watch or your clock and say, oh, that's a long time that passed? Or you might look at your clock or watch and say, wow, so much time has passed. But you don't believe or credit your own witness. In other words, when your heart tells you that, wow, a lot of time has passed, and you look at the clock, and the clock tells you that only a short period of time or a shorter period, you disbelieve yourself, and you'll believe that mechanical device. So that means that in order to change the time paradigm, devices such as these devices, whether a computer, whether a clock radio, whether a watch, we believe in these man-made things more so than in our living spirit or in our heart. In other words, our heart tells us one thing. It, tells, it gives us one calculation of time. We will dismiss that and go to a watch or go to a computer, or go to some other, some other systemic, and we'll believe the systemic and disbelieve ourselves. Now, if we do that enough, we can easily be hoodwinked and bamboozled and totally not know what time it is. You see, so when people talk about the signs of the time, but people say, wait, these things have been going on a long time. How can we be in this long time spin? So when I turned to this book right here, I said, I said, I said that was interesting. So what I did is I, I, I said, let me go back a paragraph or so and put this into a better context. And I want to share this with you all, my beloved. Here on page 106, it says, in 1891, I said, bam, look at that, 1891. Remember in the earlier part we talked about 1890. So this is one year later. So 1890, according to um, this book right here, according to Shining the Light, in 1890, this whole shadow government and ET alliance came about. They said in 1890, this is when it came about, as well as some other, um, this is like before the UFO phenomena 
was really recognized and called what it became called the UFO phenomenon. Then they said in 1930, a big ship came. Now, for us in Rastafari Revelation, we say, wait, 1890, that's about the right time because we know 1892, right? Now, this book is saying 18, 1891, it says, E. Curtis Hopkins, he mused that, quote, faith is only confidence in the actions of a principle as sure as mathematics. In other words, people would think that faith is, a, is, is not, a, is like a, just a personal thing. It's not very sure. But this particular individual had meditated and mused that faith is only confidence or trust, the key word, faith, confidence, trust, in the actions of a principle, of a principle as sure as mathematics. This is, this is the key. Knowing the principle or law governing a phenomena allows a greater margin of certainty when faced with a seeming paradox or lack of substantive detail. Now, this is, this is a very important member. This is connected now with knowing and, by extension in the Greek, gnosis or gnosis or epinosis or ye shall know the truth. And the what truth shall set you free. But if you don't know the truth, then the error will keep you trapped or stuck in a psychic twilight zone or a time loop like humanity is, like we all are, more or less, in this present, quote, time, end quote. Knowing the principle or law governing a phenomena. When you know the principle or law that governs a phenomena, it allows a greater margin of certainty when faced with a seeming paradox or lack of substantive detail. This is like this point about time. We didn't begin this because we had a whole bunch of facts so forth and so on. At first, it began from our perception about time. Like, something is strange. It doesn't seem like we're stuck in some time. Like, we keep looping. Like, nothing really seems to be new. Even a lot of the music seems to be redoing music from the past, just in a different way, but it's the same music. There seems to be a lack of real creative and originality. It's like we have more tools now, but less creativeness. With all the tools, with all the discoveries, with all the technology, we have more tools now but less creativity. So what has robbed people's creativity? The time factor is very important. Most people figure that, oh, I only have a little bit of time. We only got a little bit of time. What is time? And how are we calculating time? Think about it. This is a very important point we feel to think about. For instance, when a prediction or a prophecy, we can say, when it fails to materialize, there's a natural tendency to refute its validity. It could well be a dumb divination, a dumb divination. But one should also consider that the seer, the Bala Rai, or the Bala Rayoch, the seers, was seeing the future correctly. They were seeing the future correctly, but not understanding or overstanding it or interpreting it wrongly. You know, when a prediction, a prophecy, something fails to happen, how can a no-show prophecy be true and correct? In other words, how can a no-show prophecy still be a true and a correct prophecy? To a linear way of thinking, once again, bring us back to our central, the, the central part, the firm facts that we have, the, the lineal versus the cyclical, the cyclical time factor. See, people think that we're moving forward in the future in a lineal fashion. This is 2011. This is not 1961 or 71. This is 2011. Look how far we have come. But then really look around. How far have we come? If you go back to 
1961 and look at some of the so-called science fiction, it's almost as though the science fiction predicted exactly where we're at. For example, Star Trek and the comm link and the phone. Back then, if you was going to say to people that would actually happen, though there were some people who were saying that's actually going to happen, the majority of people failed to get it. And think about a lot of these movies and these, and these TV shows they have, like even Fringe. Do you think that somebody is just sitting down making all of this up? See, a lot of people think, oh, these people are really creative. They're just making this all up. Do you really think so? Think about past times and think about where we're at now. It's like flight, the whole thing about the Wright brothers and flight. They were talking about flying and flying machines, so-called, before there were even flying machines. So is it art predicting reality or reality predicting art? Or is it even something that will help bring both of these things together and show that there's another aspect that is hidden from us? But we perceive it, but we can't prove it because we don't have the substantive detail. We're dealing with a seeming paradox, but we know that there's principle and law that governs a phenomena. You see? Anyway, let's just go on with this. To a linear way of thinking, this is indeed a contradiction. So people who are linear thinkers, what they call so-called left-brain thinkers and linear thinkers, they say that's a contradiction. But understanding certain principles, when you understand and comprehend certain of the principles, can reveal how from a different vantage point, from a different perspective of seeing, when the, those early so-called Europeans and others who were intellectually compared to the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Ethiopians, they were Neanderthals, when they saw the horizon, they thought that was the edge of the earth, and if you went too far, you would fall off. From that vantage point, that seemed true and correct to them. And if you would say to them at that time, no, that's not true, the earth is round. The, the whole thing about the sun going around the earth or the earth going around the sun. And, you know, there's a lot of information out there, but it's interesting how it wasn't that long ago that people believed these theories that were scientific theories to be true, even though it was all unproven. But they believed it. The entire generations of people believed it. How did that shape their perception of time and therefore of reality? Think about that. So from a different vantage point, the apparent dilemma is resolved. Then we went to this chapter right here, free will and karma. A prophecy can be averted. Prophecies can be averted. And this is what certain for lack of a better word, certain Satanists or fallen angels or fallen aliens or regressive aliens and their human um, accomplices, what we call Satana and her accomplices, this is what they recognized and realized long ago that certain prophecies can be averted, not stopped, not uncreated, but they can be deflected based on deflecting human consciousness and perception. In other words, shaping human reality. That a prophecy can be averted because of the interaction of the karma or free will just like as it was in the beginning, of those involved in the chain of events leading to its fulfillment. So we keep feeling as though we are just on the precipice or we're at the dawn of a new age. Think about how long people have been talking about this, since the 1970s, right? The, even the 60s, 
Some even were talking about it before then, that we are just about on the dawn of a new age, of an era or an age of peace. But it seems as though this was averted, wasn't it? Based on what? The interaction of karma, the interaction of, of the free will of those who are involved in the chain of events that lead to the fulfillment of the prophecy. Now, and here's what it says furthermore. It says, this is seldom done consciously, unfortunately. But when there is a non-event or what seems to be a non-event, this is sometimes the reason. As we said to others recently in a, in a call conferencing and in a reason, we said, listen, a lot of people will think that we're mad when we say this, right? That actually everything ended in the 60s. Everything really ended in the 60s. We went into a new age in the 60s. There is a, another reality that is right here, but people cannot perceive it because they are stuck in a psychic or a consciousness loop. They don't even recognize it. And when people tell them, they look at the reality that has been made to appear the reality, and instead of going with their feeling, going with their heart, going with what they know on the spiritual and even the psychical level, they go with the outer reality. And that is what averts the fullness, the fulfillment of the reality from coming. So it seems that those who were like prophets of this new age and talking about an age of peace and the kingdom of God and Christ, it seems as though they were mad people, that they, there will be no peace. All of that was old wives' tales, so to speak, but they don't recognize time or what it is. Now, let's say there's an event, right? Let's talk about an a, a event. For, for, for instance, let's say in the belly, you know, as you say, suppose, let's suppose that there was an event that was presaged in the year 1910 due to materialize in 1925. That is to say, if circumstances were to unfold as a logical chain of events, 1925 would see the fruition of the prediction slash prophecy. However, the future contains not only that which will be, it doesn't contain that which will, only that which will be, but also everything else that may be, that may be. So we're living now in not the future that was will to be, we are living in a time of maybe, this whole age. I would dare say the past between 40 to about 40 or so years, let's say 40 or, or, or jubilee, between 40 to 50 years, we are living in a time of maybe, not the predicted future, but the possibility that humanity has created through its free will being manipulated, its free will being manipulated. Why do you think people seem to be stuck in the 60s and the 70s fashion-wise? Think about it for a moment. A lot of these fashions, a lot of these styles, it's like a loop. It's like a loop. People keep talking about back in the days, old school. It's a loop that we're in. And that loop also affects the conscious perception of time. Don't worry about what's on your watch and all of that. You understand? Look at the signs. Recognize, if you can, if you will, what time we are in. For instance, it would be logical for the humblest, or dimmest of oracles to forecast that a blind man walking in a straight line toward the edge of a cliff will very soon disappear over the edge to his death. That is the prediction. However, the blind man could suddenly change his mind and alter his direction based on nothing more than his personal Whim. See, this is why the Bible says when people start to talk about, I predict the end of the world is going to happen on such and such a day. You know why the Bible says 
that no one knows this? Not even the Son. Not even the Son of God, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christus, Jesus Christ. Not even the Son, but only the Father knows when exactly that day and time is because it has more to do with humanity and what we decide and what we're able to receive and how we act on that is based more on humanity's free will. You know what I'm saying? That person who predicted that based on everything going in a linear direction, it would end at that time is not necessarily incorrect about seeing the end, but about calling a time on it because time is not spiritual, prophetic time is not linear. So even when one say 2012, yes, there will be an alignment. There will be certain forces, spiritual, psychical, and even physical forces in effect. But what is the free will? How will you use your free will? How will you be aligned or altered or misaligned? That's what it's more about. So this 2012 time has, has a definite relevance. But it does not predict that when we hit this time on the clock that everything is going to change like, like snap of a finger because, look, this whole reality that humanity is living is largely what humanity has willingly or unwillingly created or recreated for themselves. So just like that blind man, that blind man could change his direction. You understand? So it's like Babylon is like that blind man. We see Babylon walking, and we know the edge of the cliff is right there, but what we haven't recognized is that Babylon, just for a whim, not knowing the edge is there, but has changed his direction, has changed his direction. So when we're looking at our clock and say he should be over the edge right now, and we see the blind man coming back to us. So this is what it means when it talks about the 400 years, and the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet full. You understand? It's not yet full. So let's understand this time matter, because the prediction would then prove false. One would say, you said the blind man is going to keep walking and fall off the edge of that cliff, and the blind man is now back over here. He's walking over here. He hasn't fallen off the edge of the cliff, right? Do exclusively to operating, do exclusive to the operating element of the free will. And remember from the very beginning, the, the serpent, symbolic of those fallen draconian entities, fallen angels, fallen aliens, extraterrestrials, whatever you want to call them. But looking at the parable of the Garden of Eden, recognize humanity's free will. Even though they were given the command, they still had the free will to disobey. So even though we are living in the so-called, quote, prophetic time, or even the calculated time, because human beings have a free will, the end is not just yet, but it's, it's, it's been like it's been near, 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 near. How could we stay in this you know, was how can you stop the light from shining? How can you stop the day from dawning or stop the nighttime from coming? That's the twilight zone. See, we're in the twilight zone where the Satanists, you understand, and the regressive aliens have been trying to push the consciousness to think in the twilight zone it's getting dark, nighttime again. War, rumor of war, terrorism, to push the consciousness into the nighttime, the dark ages again. While we should have been about pushing the consciousness to the dawn of a new day, but we still are in that twilight zone. This is where we are considering time. So the free will element needs to be understood. Taking this same circumstance again, the blind man could avert the prophecy if it wasn't his karmic destiny to so-called, quote, go at that time. He might unexpectedly remember that he'd left his dinner on the stove and turned back just as he reached the edge. If it were his fate to fall off the cliff, an example of the saving grace of good karma 
might be that he stepped over the edge as predicted. He stepped over the edge as predicted, but landed on a ledge where he was discovered by a passing sheep herder or shepherd who led him to safety. Humanity has a facility of free will, but is still subject to those whims of what people call, humanity call fortune, those winds of fortune known as, some say, quote, destiny, or known as so-called, quote, fate. The Greek translation for destiny is moira, which also means the sum total of one's experience. Remember what his majesty says? They don't know it. The youth don't know it because they lack wisdom. And they lack wisdom because they lack experience. You see, a lot of this that's going on right now seems fun to a lot of folks. Why? Because they have no consciousness of it. Even past history, they say that if you don't know history, you're bound to repeat it. But there's a whole generation that has been robbed from a knowledge of even history. So what you're getting is blank slates. A blank, even if you tell a blank slate, hey, this already happened before, the blank slate look within and see blankness. It doesn't have any record. It thinks you're a liar because all it sees before it, you understand, is the experience, this new experience, even though you can say, well, the end of this is going to be such and such, but you have to remember that if it's a blank slate, like an empty cup, it has to first fill before it spill. Think about that. The cup has to fill. The cup can't spill. The cup can't run over. My cup runneth over. My cup can only run over when it is full and more is being poured into it. But if the cup is empty, then you have to think it's, it's going to be a while before it runs over. So humanity has the facility or the faculty, the facility actually of free will. But it's still subject, we went over that right there. So 2,000 years ago, uh, Heraclitus said it, a man's character is his destiny. From a psychological viewpoint, character could be defined as a combination of heredity, or heredity, heredity, which is, which we could say is the, is the, is the, the genes.